All right, so it's been two days since uh, the car stopped at uh, 14 kilometers, eight miles left. Uh, so I'm here with uh, Sigur, and we are reading the CAN bus uh, to find out more about the battery and the car. So there is this plug where you can uh, plug in and uh, read some information about uh, mainly the battery. That's what we are looking for. Yeah. So this no is just box. stuff you can buy from eBay. Yeah, and connected to a computer via USB, and you get all these readings. And you know, I was wrong. Uh, Sigur was right uh, that uh, the battery pack was not unbalanced. It's actually very well balanced. All right. If you zoom in here, so the delta is what zero, really small number here. Uh, that means very well balanced. Uh, but how uh, how do you? I mean, how does the car balance the battery anyway? It balances it by a bleeding circuit that's okay. triggered, and it's discussion on when it's triggered and why. Okay. And uh, it looks like it's triggered around when you change from constant current to constant voltage. Okay. And then it will bleed. The you see the highest. I can show you on the graph. Okay. Uh, here, and uh, you see it will bleed the high cells. Okay, this is the voltage. Yeah, and you see mm. it looks very bad, but it's actually very good because it's really, really small difference between in the scale. So it will bleed the high cells until they get lower, so they get low, all of them. They cannot higher the load on the lower cells. So, the, so this one will take a long time, so when it's triggered, the bleeding circuit, it goes on for maybe days until it's finished. Well, if we go back to the BMS again, so the whole point is that the, the Tesla cannot charge individual cells, right? Yeah, that's right. It can only charge the whole, whole, whole battery seri pack. Serial, yeah, battery pack on the high voltage. And when you bleed one cell... Yeah, then it goes down on voltage. You only discharge, slowly discharge slowly. one of the cells, yeah, or several right. cells. Yeah. Ah, okay, so if you go back to the, the graph, so you have to, where is it again? This one and that one was low. Yeah. So you have to discharge all the other ones. Yeah, that's right. And how long does it take this whole balancing process? I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> and also that's what we see when I read and batteries. It's re very, very seldom we find anyone that's really out of the balance. Uh -huh. Most battery packs are perfectly in balance all the time. Oh, I see. And even the 60, software limited 60, is perfectly in balance. Okay. And if they like the real, if they st only start at 96%, yeah. then it's not right on the 60 because that one never charged above 86. Okay. So I think Tesla can change it and probably start the bleeding process more than when they want. Oh. And and if your car is balanced, it's no problem. Yeah, okay, but why did it stop at 14 kilometers? <laughs> That's quite possible. The BMS can be unbalanced. The okay. BMS calculates how much energy you have in your pack. And your pack is 80.4 kilowatts total. Total. And, yeah, yeah, and that's you have to subtract four to get down to zero. Well, so the energy buffer here is what people call the zero mile. Yeah, that's the zero mile. That's the energy buffer below zero. Okay, but what, uh -huh, so it, it still keeps the a buffer even though my battery is kind of old and all that. Yeah, it is, it's the same, but the one problem is that if the BMS do a wrong calculation, okay. Yeah, then it misses. So when you get down to zero, yeah. the BMS think you have more energy to use than you have. And yeah. then we see, I see this on cars that run long distances for a short while and a lot of supercharging. Mm. And then Tesla have his own uh, way to balance the BMS. And oh, okay. I will not go into the procedure because normally you never should do it. Yeah, but I have to do it. Yeah, and <laughs> I told you how to do it, so okay. you should do it. But it's nothing that common people need to do. Okay. Uh, and it's actually not a very good thing to do because you charge it really low and let it stay, and you charge it high and let it stay. Yeah. And none of those things are actually very good for the battery, but it's good for the BMS and for you. It's only you it helps because okay. you get the better value on yeah. your number, but the battery itself doesn't help it. But. So actually, well, I could do it, but I don't have to do it. No, you don't. Because, you know, another thing I noticed uh, when that thing occurred was that I had a 100 kilowatt uh, limit. Let me see if you just... Yeah, yeah, here. So the, there was like a power limit around here at 100 kilowatt. Yeah. When I had, you know, 15 kilometers left. Yeah. 
and usually you have that when you have 100 kilowatt limit you're close to zero yeah. in you reality really, yeah you're actually on my car when it's new it's below zero when I yeah uh, so it's that's if you get a limitation that's a good indication that you actually are really really close to zero so uh, I should not trust the, the, the kilometer or percentage nobody should do it actually eventually you know when people start getting cars that run long uh, you should pay attention to the kilowatt limit so uh, I remember when when the bar started getting red around 30 kilometers left I started getting like 200 yeah. 100 yeah around there and then it slowly crawled down and one time when Optimus Prime stopped I didn't film it it was at 100 and then within seconds it just whoop, dropped to 30 and then doo -doo, game over yeah so and that depends on the power output because I tested on mine okay uh, and if you have 100 and you do it power output mm -hmm. the voltage drop too high and it just shut up yeah. just shut down so if you have a high power output when you have a low energy yeah the voltage drops to 2.5 volts and it just shuts down so the so people who pull trailer has to be extremely careful if you pull trailer extremely careful because it's you you use more energy and you drop the cell voltage more when you pull it so much you use much energy hmm. so the same I tested with the 0 to 100 of mine yep. and I managed to get it shut down but I knew it so I was prepared you, I measure it so I see how you, much voltage I have the car shut down and what did you do then no i just waited because i had too much so i could drive back i was just two okay. blocks from here oh okay I see yeah because i knew and i took it more than actually i could so oh i did it with the computer connectors it's easier <laughs> oh, i see <laughs> what else can you see here by the way this program i can see charge discharge oh let me see so max have, char uh -huh. yeah this max this is charge total on your battery pack and this is discharge total uh, on no, your battery pack it, it has problems focusing here I to focus on okay yeah, yeah, yeah. and the yes. difference between these this is how much you have charged your battery pack and discharged the battery pack okay. and the engine the energy in between is actually have to be uh, heat loss in your battery pack because if you put energy in that yeah. you never get out yeah then it's lost yeah, yeah, and it's lost in heat. Yeah, I uh, I talk about that before that, you know. Yeah, the and the and the value here is wrong. It's discharged on this one, and it's charged on this. Oh, one. it's a bug in the program. It's, yeah, this is an alpha problem. It's actually just barely made, so it's nothing nothing finished. And then the, this one, max charge power. Yeah, this is how much you can charge your battery pack right now. Yeah, so you see, I have that uh, limit that. Uh, yeah, but this is the BMS that tells you, and I also see that sometimes you can charge more than this one tells you. Yeah, but slightly more. I might yeah. sometimes get 96 or 97, but yeah. not much. No, so this is the BMS telling you maximum 94.5. Yeah. And the max discharge is how much energy you can get out of the battery pack. Right now? Right now. So that's about 560 horsepower, yeah. but my battery is not at 100%. It's at yeah, 50, well, this one says 52%. Yeah. So if I had 90%, it would be higher, right? Yeah, and the real battery is 57.5%. Yeah, okay, so the re the real, oh, this real state of charge is 57, yeah. but the car reports 52. Yeah, and so because the power car takes the buffer below zero, so it will subtract, so only 100% is the same, and then it will be more and more difference. So this one I think is around 5.7% or something when you're in zero. Hmm, let's see. That's four kilo kilowatt hours. And SOC UE, Okay, I'll have yeah. to, uh, to try to focus. It has some problems focusing on the screen. Okay, yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one used to be the same as on your screen, but they changed something in software. Oh, okay. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, this is uh, how much you've driven 108,896 yeah. kilometers. That matches, yeah. And then we can get out the front drive energy when you're driving, so how much power we get. Oh, both, yeah. Oh, that's uh, when we are driving, so we are yeah, parked right now. We parked. And we can also get some other information. But if some information we haven't on this software yet, and that's how much uh, you have charged on AC and DC. Oh. And I will, I will calculate manually and you will get it afterwards. Cool. Because I... So then you know exactly how much you have charged on AC yeah. and DC. But this number is new and they started in around January 2016. Okay. So if you have older cars, yes. then you don't know how much you had before. Okay. But if your car is produced after, you know it. And then you can find out how much rig again you have. Okay. Because you, if you add 
uh, charge, mm-hmm. AC charge and DC charge. Oh, that one. Yeah, and then you check your total charge. Yeah. Yeah, and you will have a difference here. Yeah. And the difference will be the region. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and uh, on the normal cars, we see around actually around 15% here in Norway on Regen. 15, yeah, that sounds yeah. plausible, but yeah. maybe uh, in uh, Netherlands and Denmark, less. It can be a difference, yeah. Yeah. So, and uh, also you have uh, energy loss, like we told you here. Yeah, and yeah. that's normally is between 5 and 8% yeah. okay. energy loss in the battery pack. But that's sometimes it's really supercharging. And yep. driving. So if you have a bad driving habit yep. with your hard on your, your right foot, yeah. you have a higher percentage heat loss in the battery pack than the people driving more like a Sunday drive. Five to eight percent, right? Yeah, I've seen up to ten. Mine, I'm guessing more than ten. Yeah, we because can. of trailer usage and yeah. heavy foot. Yep. <laughs> and lots of supercharging. Yep. So that's something you can find out later, right? Yeah, we can find out now if you find a calculator. <laughs> what is it too high, uh, heavy? Uh, Oh, okay. Oh, it's just that number minus uh, that one or something. Yeah, right? yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Let's see. So, uh, if you can give me the numbers, I can. Oh, okay, there. Uh, four, four. Yeah. yeah. Uh, eight, seven, four point six. Okay. Well, it's a eleven percent loss, roughly. Yeah, heat loss. Well, that's yeah, that's possible because of the trailer usage and the um, yeah, and the. Um, <laughs> it's quite high. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I think you have a be really heavy right foot too. <laughs> that could be possible. <laughs> With the trailer, of course. Yeah. <laughs> So that means that you have a 15%, I will just find out how much you have in the region. Okay. Uh, it's nice to see when you drive with a trailer if you get a higher region than normally people have. Because I don't know how much the re- actually the trailer normally have a break. So yep. it's probably damage for your region. So you can have lower or higher. Yeah, yeah. it depends how steep the downhill is and all that stuff. Yep. But I'm pretty sure that uh, it can regen most of the energy based on like, I mean, it's not that yep. steep. No, but if the trailer uses brakes, yeah. then you lose that energy. But you know, if I'm going, going on like a slow downhill, yeah, yeah. Uh, like you say Osterdal, yeah. yeah, then I can regen most of yeah. it. So you get those numbers later. Hmm. Mm. Yeah, cool. All right, but I think uh, that's it. Uh, you're logging some stuff. Uh, it, it, you can like you can pull lots of stuff from the car. Yeah, we lots can of info. See if I can get it. Uh, I've seen it before. I, there, there's so much like data stored in uh, the MCU, the media. No, this is not stored. This is the data that's going. Oh, it's I think, going. Right I'm just sniffing the traffic that's oh. going in the car. Oh, okay, so it's nothing stored I can pick up. Only the thing that's going between the units on Canvas. But you know, um, Tesla pulled some logs. Yeah, yeah. I, you, then you plug on the other plug. Oh, the other plug. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Ah, oh, that's, that's a different that's one. That's a network plug. Oh, okay. And you can use the Tesla's own software to get up a lot. And that's more storage in the MCU. Yes, they, yeah. they look into my log and they saw lots of stuff like um, like uh, how many times I used wide open throttle, uh, how many percentage was used for heating and yep. stuff. Yep. So, uh, sometimes I wonder why they don't show more info mm-hmm. than this. Uh, this seems like a hex. Uh, yep, this is the canvas information. Okay, what can you find out here? We can find out uh, 304. 304. 304, okay. Fine. Uh, minus no, this one is hard to find because this one is logging every, absolutely every things in the car. So okay. I can take this one as less. Mm-hmm. The three or four have your AC and DC charging. Oh, I see. Is it, I'm, I'm guessing that um, probably like 90% is on DC charging. Yeah, then you get the limitation. Yeah, pretty fast. And um, because I supercharge a lot and I also use the channel more a lot. And, uh, it would be way different uh, in the days of Middle and the Falcon. Then it would probably be like, I don't know, 60, 70 percent DC and the rest in AC. Mm. But uh, yeah. 
Well, anyway, uh, this was very interesting. I've actually seen uh, that program before. It was another guy, uh, Dennis. Uh, so there, there's like lots of stuff you can look into in the in the cars. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I was making a different but, software that's not finished yet. Mm. So it's yeah, that could be interesting. Very yeah, nice. Cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, uh, this was very interesting for me and also probably interesting for you guys to see uh, what's in there, yeah. So uh, I think that's it for now and uh, I guess I can comment, uh, yeah, the DC, uh, whatever, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. later. Uh -huh. All right, so that's it for then. Bye-bye. Bye. All right, you know what, uh, the, the video was about to end, but this uh, topic is, is so interesting and many people asked me about this before. So, uh, you know, the different, like the, the ratio between AC and DC charging on my car, uh, I guess it was pretty high that like 90% was on uh, DC and 10% on AC. And um, well, we found the answer. We calculated some numbers and yeah. Okay, so this is just a notepad, but you see, AC charging is about 10,000 kilowatt hour and DC charging is 30,000 kilowatt hours. So that means uh, AC charging 25% and DC charging 75%. Wow, okay, it's pretty high, but <laughs> not as high as I, as I expected. All the other numbers just total charge and regen and some stuff. So uh, why wasn't it higher? Why wasn't it like 90% as I uh, expected? Well, do you have any good ideas? Yeah, it's because probably you charge it fully before you leave. Yeah, I And then you drive. Fully. Yeah. And then when you come home, you're quite empty and you fill it up again on AC. Yeah, that's possible because um, actually, you know, if you look on the trip meter here, um, well, it's been, I added some extra now, but uh, I remember after my last trip to Trondheim and a little bit past Trondheim, I consume 400 kilowatt hours, uh, roughly, uh, but I charge to 90% before I left, so that's at least some 60, 65 kilowatt hours that I had on AC before I left. And also, you have to count when I get home and I charge up again. So it's um, you can subtract, let's say, I don't know, 50, 60 kilowatt hour from the 400, and that means. Yeah, a roughly 25% on AC then. So as long as my trips are around 1,000, 1,200 kilometers, then this is <laughs> this is how it's gonna be. All right, but uh, anyway, I think that's it then. So very interesting. Yes, maybe we should uh, come back uh, later and uh, check out again. Yeah, it'd be nice. And then I can make a graph and see the changes. Yeah. The battery pack and also if we say something else because I'll have the log in the backup so I can take it up later and see if we see other other stuff on it. Yeah. Mm, All nice. right. Cool then. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you.